looking at some of the data this morning, we look at oil, it, it, it's trading at near a two-month low. Um, you've got the supply side, you've got OPEC bellowing out the stuff. The U.S. has more oil than it knows what to do with. We need some action from OPEC, don't we? Who am I to say? We'll see what OPEC decides to do later this year. What I can tell you is that there, there's, you know, a pressure now building from, you know, Algeria in support of Venezuela's request to uh, do something about the price of oil. However, the Gulf states remain uh, adamant that this is actually an opportunity for them to uh, uh, undertake the sorts of reforms that they feel they they should be undertaking anyway. And and so, you know, you have a range of views now mm. uh, a, a, across the MENA region from, you know, Algeria saying we must, we must, we must do something about it and the Gulf states saying thank you very much, this is an excellent opportunity to reform. Well, the IMF has warned that at $50 oil, it, it, there are substantial issues in, in terms of Saudi, in terms of Oman, and in terms of Bahrain. This is a, a big geopolitical issue, isn't it? It's potentially sparking a major geopolitical buildup. Not necessarily. I think that, you know... Saudi withdrawing money from overseas, Saudi delaying contract payments, Saudi beginning to tax land, Saudi, Saudi doing things that I never thought imaginable over the 30 years that I've visited the country. Well, let's also remember the time when Saudi had more money coming into its coffers than it knew what to, to do with when, oil, when the price of oil hit $145 a barrel in the summer of 2007. There's a lot of alarm, alarmism and sensationalism that surrounds these things. Back in 2007, uh, you couldn't find a hotel room in the Gulf anymore. It was treated by markets as a new El Dorado, and people stampeded into the wrong stocks and bonds mm. and lost a lot of money. Now, uh, it's the exact reverse. There's enormous alarmism around what's going on. The fact of the matter is that Saudi Arabia uh, continues to have a debt-to-GDP ratio, well, last year was under 2%, and this year, by the end of all the issuance that is projected, it will still be under 7%. Mm -hmm. Um, now, the, it is incumbent upon the, uh, upon the IMF to make the sorts of projections they make in order to... And some would say that they don't have great record on projections either. Well, independently of what one judges the record to be, I think the IMF did the right thing by outlining what is likely to come ceteris paribus, meaning if nothing changes from what we are observing today. But you and I know that in five years, which is the IMF projection which caused yeah. so much alarm, in five years, a lot can change. Think of five years ago. So I'm not as worried about that as some people are. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Gulf states can live for several years, again, Cetris Paribus, uh, on, on, you know, the sorts of revenues they're getting now. It, there are signs that the oil market it might have bottomed out. The prices might have bottomed out. Who knows? Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. You, you would actually concur with that, John. I mean, that's, that, that goes back to the central tenet of what you and I were discussing from, from an inflation, from a global inflation point of view, is that oil will drop out. I mean, last year, this time last year, yeah. uh, we, we, we were sort of hitting the bottom or hit, hit, hitting those, th those lows. Where are we in the debate, if, as Florence says, potentially uh, we're basing out here? Yeah, well, we should be. I mean, it was, it was in the fourth quarter of 2014, the oil price halved from 90 to or under $45 yeah. at the time. And that's still what we're seeing come through in the headline inflation measures. You know, there's winners and losers in all of this, of course. And um, for, for all that it's putting downward pressure on inflation, for all that it's changing the dynamics of, um, of foreign exchange reserves and, and, you know, the money within uh, oil producing um, economies and central banks. It's giving a boost to consumers as well because it's sort of obviously reducing the, the costs of transport and so on. Um, and, and in due course, you know, we'll see, we'll see where we go from here. I think what's important, certainly from a bond market and central bank point of view anyway, is we get some stability in these markets. I think it would be better for, certainly for the bond markets and central bank policymakers if the oil price, commodity prices and all these other inputs just stabilized for a while and allowed them to see exactly what sort of macro environment well, now there's a few less there's a few less Ameri there's a few less american banks with commodity based trading desks well, involved in the market yeah. maybe you will see uh, some continuity for us because because we so rarely get you into the studio i want to move the agenda on to syria you're based as you say in the middle east these days um what is the perspective on bashir al-assad's meeting with putin um we spoke to to the italian minister yesterday who said that look You've got to tacitly accept that, uh, you know, Russia is now part of, of discussing the whole settlement um, of Assad. That was the Italian foreign minister, Paolo Gentiloni. 
Well, the, the Russians have certainly been consistent in their position on Syria since the beginning, uh, in, in backing Assad and in wanting Assad to be part of the solution. That has not changed. What has changed, obviously, is the recent air intervention and, and military, seemingly also ground intervention. Um, and that has the potential of uh, spiraling into dangerous ground just because it increases the numbers uh, of players uh, in, in this conflict uh, and um, augments the need for very, very careful coordination and also augments the, the need for uh, the, 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 the possibility of, of near misses, as, mm. as one, one, one can imagine. So, uh, but in terms of the way this uh, conflict is evolving, there's no surprise. We've seen conflicts like this before. The Lebanon War of 15 years escalated and involved practically everybody under the sun, including the U.S. bombing from the Mediterranean into Lebanon, uh, Israeli, uh, the Israeli invasion, uh, financing from the Gulf states to various parties. These, these types of conflicts escalate before they start to de-escalate. De and I think that at least now things are moving. Uh, the refugee crisis in Europe has uh, caused things to start to move. Uh, the manner in which the Russians are, are uh, escalating their intervention is causing things to move. Uh, let us hope that they will move in, this, in the right direction. It's hard to say, but I, I, I think it's better for things to move than not to move.